Smoking hot. Fast. Flair, Flair, Flair. Tag that number two engine. Take it around. On the go. A real first class Kablamo landing followed by a smash and go. It happens. It can happen to any of us, especially on these long hauls. Let's check it out. It's Tuesday, April 18th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And here on the Aviation Herald, we have a Cargo Lux Boeing 747-400 freighter performing flight from Dubai and the UAE to Luxembourg. Landed on Luxembourg's runway 06. That's about a 13,000 foot long runway, but bounced. The left wing dropped and the left engines, CF6, touched the runway surface before the crew initiated a go around. The aircraft climbed to 4,000 feet, positioned for another approach to land on runway 06, and landed without further incident about 15 minutes after the go around. And here's the damage to the bottom of the number two engine. Yeah, it'll buff out, but it looks like there's some smashed end bits here. This video and stills from Cayenne's spotting at the Luxembourg airport. Good still showing uh, just just after the number two engine hit the tarmac, you can see the automatic ground spoilers opening up for the landing. 747 guys, what flap setting are we looking at here? Are we looking at uh, your normal landing flap setting? What are some of the, we don't know what some of the extenuating circumstances may be surrounding this hard landing. We don't even know what the winds are. Was this a tailwind situation? But look how much bend they've got on the wing at this point. <laughs> that thing's just smashing into the ground. I thought the number one engine would show more damage, but because of the dihedral of the wing of the 747, the number two engine is the engine that is closer to the ground on one of these kind of hard landing situations. There's another shot of the number two engine damage to the aft area. There's that shot we looked at on the um, report there. And there's a shot of the aircraft after after the bounce or beginning the bounce. And look at the lift all back up in the wings there. The spoilers are closed. They are initi <coughs> initiating their go around. So a, a touch and go, a smash and go, a go around after you touch down the aircraft. Remember, you can always go around even after you've hit the ground as long as you have not initiated the thrust reversers, as long as you have not come into reverse thrust, you can always do a go around. You've got plenty of energy on the aircraft. You just use your V ref speed as your rotate speed and you'll be at rotate speed real quick. But there's some considerations with some of these different aircraft models uh, when doing a touch and go like this. Typically what you want to do is just fly the aircraft. Click everything off and hand fly the aircraft. Click off the auto throttles and the autopilot and hand fly it. In the 777, the aircraft that I fly, there's an anomaly in the software that we need to that everybody needs to be trained up on and aware of. Let's get into that. Specifically regarding a touch and go or a go round after you have touched the ground. Remember the Asiana crash back in 2013 at San Francisco Airport. Again, this is Boeing 777 specific information where the crew was attempting to do a visual approach and got the automation into a situation where they were high and hot. And so they ripped the throttles back to idle. And in the process of coming around to land, the auto throttles in the Boeing 777 at the time did not wake up or re-engage and the auto throttles stayed in an idle condition and the crew was late to detect that and nobody was minding the store and it was not until way too late in the game that they realized that their airspeed was way too low and that the throttles were not coming up and then they finally added power but it was much too late and they hit the seawall. So as a result of that auto throttles not waking up, Boeing changed the software in the Boeing 777 so that the auto throttles would wake up in a situation like this. 
similar to that of an Airbus aircraft. Now, it's introduced a, another anomaly into the auto throttle system that seven triple seven Boeing triple seven operators need to know about, and it's addressed in a bulletin. The standard go around procedure in the Boeing triple seven is toga go around, hit the toga buttons, throttles come up, flaps twenty, positive rate based on the barrel altimeter. Make sure you're climbing before you jerk the gear up. Set missed approach altitude. But the toga switches are basically uh, disabled on the ground. And with this new change in the software, if you do one of these deals where you do a touch and go and you hit the toga button, the throttles, and especially if you hit the toga button, push the throttles up and then start dry, flying the aircraft, taking your hands off the throttle, it'll, those throttles will come right back to idle. You need to disconnect the auto throttles and of course the autopilot if it isn't already. Disconnect the automation, hand fly the aircraft, setting the throttles just like a real airplane. And then once you are safely away from the ground by at least five feet, then you can re-engage the auto throttles by engaging the toga button. So you got to fly the aircraft first, get it up off the ground, and then initiate your normal go around procedure. So even though this crew suffered a very hard landing, they did an excellent job on the touch and go, getting the aircraft back up and safely back up into the air and around after this bounce for a safe landing. Look at that rate of climb. Remember when you hit the toga buttons once on the triple seven, at least, I don't know on the 747, if you hit the toga buttons once, you're going to get a climb rate of about 2,000 feet per minute. If you hit them twice, you'll get full go round power and you will climb out like a homesick angel like these guys are doing here. They're probably very light on fuel at this point. So better luck on the landing next time, boys, but good job on the touch and go. Thank you so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.